Now, the Democrats, sort of a testament to this, this was their reaction to everything that was going on. Many of them decided that it was time for them to go out and actually blame Trump for the shooting. So here's a montage of that put together by the Washington Post. If it actually ever comes up. You see a, a president who, in, in his first speech as a candidate for the highest office in the land, described Mexican immigrants as, as rapists and criminals, has been warning about the threats of, of caravans and asylum seekers who he's described as animals and, and an infestation, despite the fact that immigrants commit crimes at a far lower rate than do those who are born in this country, despite the fact that we are now in one of the safest cities in the United States of America, safe, not despite, but because it is a city of immigrants, the president's language, his rhetoric, has produced the kinds of hate crimes that we saw in El Paso yesterday, but we've been seeing across this country, they've been on the rise for each one of the last three years. Well, every time this happens, we say never again. We say we're going to do something. We say it's going to change, and it hasn't. I've been thinking a lot about the fact that this same debate and this same cycle has been going on my entire adult life. And I'm wondering what it will take to get the sense of urgency to get Washington to actually respond, especially when Americans, frankly, in both parties, want to see changes, at least some basic common sense measures on gun safety. Mick, why has the president downplayed the threat of white nationalism. I, I don't think he I don't think he has. Go look at what he said yesterday. He condemned this he condemned this without any reservation whatsoever, but, but, John. So I don't think that's fair. Well wait to, a minute. To, look, to, can, can, can I read the president's words? Because back sure. in March he was asked directly, do you see today white nationalism as a rising threat around the world? And his answer, I don't really. I think it's a small group of people that have a very, very serious problem. He downplayed the threat of white nationalism. There is one person that is responsible directly for that shooting in El Paso, and that's the shooter. At the same time, as our national leader, you have a role to play in either fanning the flames of division or trying to bring Americans of different backgrounds together. Most presidents have chosen to try and bring people together. This president very early on made a clear choice to divide people for his own political benefit. One of your 2020 rivals, uh, Congressman Beto O'Rourke, told me this morning that he believes President Trump is a white supremacist um, or a white nationalist. Do you agree? I do. Look, and it gives me no pleasure to say this, but I think all of the evidence out there uh, suggests that we have a president who is a racist, who is a xenophobe, uh, who appeals and is trying to appeal to white nationalism. Uh, and, you know, it breaks my heart to have to say uh, that this is the person we have who is president of the United States. So there you have it. Democrat after Democrat after Democrat trying to tie President Trump and his rhetoric to the shooter in some way. And what's especially ironic about that is that these are not pundits or peons or people on the left that just have some kind of radical talk show. This isn't the Alex Jones of the left, for example which I've always said Alex Jones is actually the Alex Jones of the left. But these are people that are prominent, that have a lot of influence, that are running for president, so essentially running for the leadership of their own party, trying to directly connect President Trump's choice and rhetoric and actions and attributing that as at least a contributing factor, uh, if not one of the primary causes of mass shootings which is ridiculous on a number of levels because we had mass shootings long before President Trump took office. We had mass shootings, even white supremacist mass shootings in the case of South Carolina. We had those while President Obama was in office and nobody was blaming him for the divide, even though he had a lot of very divisive language. Nobody blamed him for that, but all of a sudden now that Trump's in office, we're supposed to forget everything that happened more than 15 seconds in the past. And it's especially ironic for Bernie when you consider this. Bernie Sanders had a guy who was a supporter of his that actually worked inside his campaign who tried to kill Republicans specifically because they were Republicans at a softball game. I know I spoke to some of the people that were there. 
I even spoke to, to Mo Brooks, who may have actually helped save Steve Scalise's life. And when all of that happened, I don't remember any conservatives coming out and blaming Bernie Sanders or even Bernie Sanders' ideology for that. Everyone that I heard, and I'm sure there were some you know, obscure ones that you could dig up that were saying that, but all of the main guys that I heard, the guys that show up on News Radio 1440, Mark Levin, Sean Hannity, Rush Limbaugh, they were saying the shooter is responsible. Period. That was it. He had a dangerous political ideology that was based on violence, but that wasn't Bernie Sanders' fault. Bernie Sanders didn't tell him to go do that. And so because of that, generally speaking, as all the prominent conservatives that I heard, none of them blamed the Democrats for that. And yet, on the other side, when the situation is reversed, the Democrats cannot find a microphone fast enough to try to connect that with Donald Trump's rhetoric and then to also promise, well, this is the reason that you need to elect me because I'm going to end all this. As if them being in the White House is going to magically stop all mass shootings. Didn't work with Barack Obama, ain't going to work with you. This is so incredibly despicable that they're trying to do this, and like I said earlier with Elizabeth Warren, actually profit off of the deaths of their fellow Americans to try to use that as a tool to bolster their own poll numbers and try to get elected. It's absolutely sick. And let's also look at the differences in the two. These two guys, these abhorrent, evil pieces of human garbage that decided that they were going to kill people, including, in one of the shooter's case, their own sister, they both had far-left radical views. Now, in the case of El Paso, had some pretty far radical right views as well. But in both cases had some radical leftist views. And for Bernie Sanders, who's actually had in his past a legitimate campaign supporter, someone that worked for Sanders, commit an actual act of domestic terrorism to try to pin these two guys, one of which was granted a white nationalist, but also an eco-terrorist, and the other guy who had extreme leftist views trying to tie that in somehow to, well, President Trump's rhetoric is really the reason for that. Here's another question. Why did that shooter choose Walmart? Granted, Walmart is a popular public place, and so if he was just looking for mass casualties, it's certainly not a bad choice. But why did he choose Walmart specifically? If you've looked through his manifesto, one of the themes that pops up is he is against consumerism, he's worried about the environment, that our consumerism and our wastefulness is going to destroy the planet, and that's also the reason that he wants to eliminate some people, because he believes that they would contribute less waste, contribute less greenhouse gases, whatever. Uh, however, that works in his you know, insane mind. That was part of his rationale. I think that the guy targeted Walmart on purpose. I don't know about the other shooting that happened at Walmart, but this guy, I think he did that on purpose because of his anti-consumerism shtick. And who has been, for the past two months, talking about how evil and wicked and greedy Walmart is and how they are literally engaged in slavery by paying their employees only $11 an hour as opposed to 15 Oh, right. That's Bernie Sanders. Again, I'm not blaming Bernie Sanders for the shooting. I'm just saying that it would be far easier to connect Bernie Sanders' worldview and ideology with the El Paso shooter than Donald Trump. Because even if you don't like Donald Trump, even if you think he's secretly a closet racist and white nationalist, which obviously these people do, Bernie Sanders just said that, even if you believe that, Donald Trump would still at least be a closet white nationalist and racist. Bernie Sanders openly has animosity towards Walmart. And so it's far easier to connect those two dots 
And yet Bernie Sanders is trying to say, well, Trump's really the reason. He's really the problem. He's the reason that this is happening, even though Bernie Sanders has said stuff that you could much more easily relate back to this person's ideology than Donald Trump could. Much easier. Can we just all not try to use a tragedy like this for political gainsmanship and to make a point? That's all I'm asking. Can we treat each other like human beings and not try to bludgeon each other to death with these dead American citizens? I think that would be a good first step. And my advice to the Democrats and my advice to the left would be, you can't demonize half the country and then all of a sudden say, well, it's just such a big mystery that they don't want to work with us and they don't trust our coverage of this and trust what we have to say on it or think it's valuable. You can't say, well, it's people that are clinging to their God and their guns and NRA members and people that own guns and don't want to give up their gun rights. You can't say that and say that they're the reason that these people are dead, that they're the problem, and then throw up your hands in the air and say, oh, it's this big mystery that they don't want to work with us or don't want to listen to it. They don't want to, to hear our common sense gun reform to take all their guns. You don't get to do that. And it should be no surprise to you when people that you demonize constantly are not receptive to your message. Hey, y'all know I'm a stats and numbers guy, so here's some fun facts for you. People that subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel are 200% more satisfied with their online video content and 400% more likely to be able to speak intelligently about politics and religion with somebody they know. Also, four out of five people that subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel live healthier, more fulfilling lives. And that fifth guy was just a social justice warrior with a stick up his butt. Also, 82% of the statistics on the internet totally made up.